So good afternoon. Uh, thanks everyone for being here. My name is Peter Bohacek. I'm from TRL Space. We are a system integrator from uh, Brno, Czech Republic. Um, and first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for putting together this great event. It's uh, very inspiring. The beautiful premises make it even more exciting. Um, but I will be talking about our mission to the moon. And um, uh, TRL Space is a system in integrator with a goal to have products on every continent um, and to put a flag on the moon. And when I say a flag on the moon, um, the question is, what flag? Well, when I say we are going to the moon, it doesn't mean us only as TRL Space or us as a Czech Republic. It means us, all us in this room, all us in the Central and Eastern European region. Um, and we want to do it together um, uh, with, uh, with regional partners, with smaller states, with states that are not as advanced maybe in space technology to demonstrate our capability. And um, you might ask why. Um, and uh, this region, I believe, the clicker might get stuck. Well, um, ah, there we go. The most important thing why we want to do it in this region is that um, uh, we need, obvi for obvious reasons, strong Europe. And um, uh, Europe cannot be strong together uh, only one, on one side. Um, and we need to make sure that even the Eastern and Central European regions, the new states are uh, developing their capabilities, they're working together, and that we're doing it all together as a, as a one continent. And recently, we have seen that this region can pull together the political will um, uh, um, uh, within the whole Europe um, uh, in terms of security, in terms of defense, and we believe that this is a good start to move into other aspects as space. Um, uh, and the whole idea is that maybe for the new states, it's sometimes difficult within the European Union to secure the funds, to compete with the bigger companies in the West. Um, and we want to make sure that we have the equal opportunities and the equal political will to do so. And um, unlike EU, we have the ESA, which is a great principle of geo geo geographical return, which enables building capacities, um, uh, having equal opportunities, um, and that's what we want to focus on. But we want to take it a step further. We want to lead a specific designed mission led by Central and Eastern European countries um, uh, to be ambitious, to show, to demonstrate the capabilities, the will, and the ambition. And um, uh, just to summarize, we want to do it to show that even in this region there is the economic, um, the technological, the university, um, and the... Um, um, the research capabilities to do so. Um, we want to be part of the new space area. We want this region to be part of the new space exploration of space, um, uh, which means that uh, we want to be focusing on small things, on smart things, on quick things. Specifically, we want to go to the moon to study subsurface structures. We want to understand what is there, because when we start using resources in space, we have to know where exactly we're going to go to. So we want to focus on developing a very good, precise map of what is on the moon and, um, uh, and where we need to go to get it. We want to develop new payloads, new subsystems with this mission that will help us to be part of other, uh, other missions around the space, around the Earth, um, and in the um, whole solar system. And um, we want to make sure that we know where we want to go in the, in, on the moon, not only to use resources, but also to stay sustainable for long term. And um, what this actually means, I'll try to summarize in a few slides. But as I go through the slides, make sure you try to picture yourself um, to figure out what role you can play in this mission, what role your university, your company, your association, your country, your peers can play in this mission, because um, we can only do this together um, uh, as, a, as a region. Um, we start with the main scientific objectives. As every big um, uh, you know, exploration mission, we have to have a very strong um, scientific goals. And there are essentially two things that we want to focus on. One is lava tubes lunar lava tubes, and other one are these other geological phenomenon, irregular mare patches. And I will try to quickly uh, explain what they are. Um, lava tubes are essentially left over from, um, from volcanic activity. Um, uh, they are essentially channels um, on the moon uh, that we have not explored yet. We know they are there, and we know uh, mainly because of the so-called skylights. Uh, these holes where these lava tubes caved in, um, and we know they're there, but we don't know. We do not know where exactly they go. Um, and the main interest in these lava tubes is because they can provide essentially best home we can find on the moon, a moon that doesn't have atmosphere, that doesn't have a magnetic field to protect us from radiation. 
that doesn't give us you know, natural um, a home to protect us from micrometeorites. Um, and these lava tubes would provide essential um, great shelter from all these negative aspects. That's why we want to go there, but we need to know where exactly they are. Um, and the problem is that there are a lot of um, ESA missions, a lot of NASA missions to explore these lava tubes, but we do not have a concrete map where they are. Uh, we know where the skylights are, where the cavens are, but we want to explore exactly um, where they lead to. Um, the other geological phenomenon that we want to study is the so-called irregular Mare patch. Uh, what well, irregular Mare patch is, it's this relatively new thing on the moon. Um, uh, we do not know its origins, and that's, why, that's what makes it very, very interesting. Um, this is what they look like. This, this one is specifically called Inna. Um, and the question about these um, IMPs, as they are called um, um, in a shortened version, is uh, what is their origin? If we look on the uh, geology of the moon, we know that uh, the volcanic activity in the moon ended at around 2 um, billion years ago. Uh, we can count it based on the meteorite strikes per, per area in the regular areas on the moon. Um, but when we looked at the uh, irregular Mara patch, we found that there's much less impacts from meteorites. Um, and by calculations and assumption, um, uh, there's an argument that these areas are very, very young volcanic activity, essentially just several uh, tens of millions of years ago, which would completely overwrite the history books. Um, and um, there's another hypothesis that uh, these irregular mare patches have been formed with a special process, geolog geological process, where essentially um, volcanic foam formed under the surface, which then absorbed a lot of these meteorites. And uh, this is a big question that we want to probe and we want to understand, um, um, uh, we want to understand what the origin of these, uh, of these um, uh, things are. If this is a porous structure, which impacted a lot of, a lot of meteorites, or if it's a, a very, very recent volcanic activity, which would mean we really need to rewrite history books about the moon, about Earth, and about our knowledge of, um, of our solar system. Um, this is just a map to demonstrate where approximately these uh, geological phenomena are and where we want to go with our mission. Um, it's mainly concentrated in, um, uh, in the Sea of Tranquility, Sea of Serenity, and, um, and this is something that we're looking at. But the mission concept, to go over quickly, um, we want to build a relatively small uh, probe that is somewhere between 50 up to 100 kilograms. We're still working on the... Um, uh, understanding how big um, the probe needs to be. It will be a piggyback mission, so we'll go on a bigger lunar mission, um, uh, so we don't have to secure the entire uh, launch. Um, and we want to go on a highly elliptical orbit. Um, uh, that means we will go very low over the areas that we want to study to allow us better data, better resolution, um, and then fly out um, um, on, a, on an elliptical orbit. We're going to have um, essentially two parts of the mission. Uh, we're looking at mainly six instruments um, that where we want to find partners that will be part of them, that will be designing and developing these instruments. First one is LIDAR, then there's a ground penetrating radar, um, and then there are um, spectrometers, hyperspectral imager, multispectral camera, mass spectrometer, and um, X ray um, spectrometer. And this is the demonstration of the, um, uh, of the high optical um, um, orbit. Uh, we're looking at 10 to 20 kilometers at the um, uh, parallelune, and at the apogee, we want to be at about 200 kilometers. Um, uh, that still obviously depends on the trade-off between the weight, um, uh, the orbital maintenance costs, um, the size of the instrument, the reach, the resolution of the instruments. What we're going to do on the moon in the first step is that we're going to use the ground penetrating radar to understand, to map out the subsurface structures. We want to go at about 100 meters deep, um, uh, sub-meter resolution with these radars. So we're building on a heritage of other previous missions, um, and um, this will be the first step. We'll also uh, map out um, the spe spectral emitted from the, by the sunlight reflected from the, um, from the surface to understand the um, uh, 
uh, the resources that are there. Such maps have been done, but they have not been done at such a, a quick resolution, high resolution that we want to focus on. The next step will be we will use LIDARs to, um, to map out exact topographic profile of these irregular mare patches, because that's something we do not know, that's something we need, um, and that it's something that has been done, again, by NASA and uh, Japanese ro uh, probes, but at a very high resolution, only about 60 meters um, uh, horizontally, three to seven meters vertically. We want to go to centimeter levels with our LIDARs um, to map out specific, uh, specific um, topography. The next step will be more exciting one. This was a sort of observational phase. The next one will be much more critical. Um, our orbiter will uh, loop out. Um, and then we will use some sort of a kinetic impactor. We're still looking into that if it will be a one or three U CubeSat that will be able to navigate itself um, to impact one of these irregular Mara patches. Um, but this, um, this impactor will go and impact um, one of the areas that we select with sub-kilometer preci precision. Um, and um, allow us to study further, mainly the subsurface composition of the area, um, the subsurface physical properties of the irregular mare patch, and um, have, uh, help us understand what's below the surface. Because um, so far, main um, uh, resource prospecting on the moon has been done to focus on a surface reflection. But it does not give you a good picture of what's under there. Um, there's a lot of changes due to the solar wind, a lot of changes due to the micrometeorites, um, and we really need to find out what's under the surface on the moon to be able to mine it. Um, once the impact happens, we will want to generate kinetic impact that um, creates plasma, so we can study it with um, um, a with, um, hyperspectral camera, ha have a really good resolution on its composition. Um, we want to also create enough of ejecta that we will be able to collect it with a mass spectrometer on the orbit. Um, and we also use the um, X-ray spectrometer to get a better um, uh, understanding of the composition of the subsurface um, regolith. And this is, in general, the mission. Um, uh, we are now in the phase that we're working on a phase zero study that should be done by the, uh, by the end of the year. But now comes the most important step, and that is how, um, how we can all do this uh, together. Right now, we're working on the phase zero study, um, and we want to get it ready for the ministerial this November. Um, and we're looking for uh, to involve as many um, universities, uh, industries in the Central and Eastern European region to be part of this. Um, uh, to push at the ministerial for this mission to be accepted um, within the expert program of the um, Terra Nova program aimed at exploration of space. And uh, we want this to be the first step to work together on A and B1 um, studies up, up to the PDR um, to be ready for the next phase, which would be the next ministerial at 2025, where we would be ready to decide if we're going to go and when we're going to go. So um, if this sounds exciting to you, make sure to, first of all, find me um, or our CEO, Peter Capone, who will be part of the uh, discussion later, um, uh, to talk to us about it. Make sure that uh, you figure out how to contact your ESA delegation um, uh, to make sure that uh, we can do this together. And uh, let's make sure that um, Eastern and Central Europe goes to the moon and that we're part of the new space uh, economy, of the new cislunar exploration, and um, uh, that we are up there and not only down here on Earth, but also in space. So thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Petr. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, any questions, maybe? Very one quick question. No? Uh, yes, there is. Go on. Thank you for excellent presentation. I have a question. Uh, you're going to study front side or dark side of the moon. It doesn't matter right now. And second question, what's the, the communication? You will need to have uh, some station or your uh, satellite will be possible to communicate directly to the, to the Earth? So uh, the irregular Mare patch that we know about, that they are there, um, that also connect with the, with the known lava tubes, that's mainly on the borderline of Sea of Tranquility and Sea of Serenity. So that's the front side of the moon. Um, so that's the area we will be flying over with the, in the Perlune. Um, as far as the communication, um, uh, we're counting on the lunar pathfinder that ESA is planning to send and launch very soon um, uh, to be able to provide sort of the middle link for the communication. So um, we would likely not be, you know, 
downloading all the data straight from the orbiter um, uh, down to Earth, but using this, uh, this lunar pathfinder and maybe other already orbiters that will be there to provide communication because th this infrastructure around the moon is building, it's, it's going to be quick, and we want to be part of that as well. All right, thank you. Thank you once again, Peter. Uh, hopefully, there will be also some small Latvian payloads. Maybe the crushing uh, part could be from Latvia. Or the laser. Yeah, <laughs> or the laser. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank give you. A, let's give a hand of applause. And